Ladies and gentlemen, this story is really just one word, bizarre. What's up, everybody? My name is Stacey Brewer, and this is H Blues Word. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for joining me. So let's talk about this Carly Russell story. Like I said at the top, you know, this is really just a bizarre story. I remember being on Instagram, uh, seeing a lot of posts about Carly Russell. And um, I think it was Joy Reid who uh, made a post about it. And a lot of celebrities and personalities ended up sharing it because let's be honest, you know, Carly Russell, she is a young black woman. And oftentimes black women, when we end up missing, we don't get a lot of media coverage. So it was very important that this story got the light uh, that it needed. And so I know I ended up sharing it. A lot of other people ended up sharing it. And it just went viral and it just became this massive thing. And then all of a sudden, about 48 hours later, uh, Carly Russell was found. Um, I was extremely happy. A lot of people were happy, but there were uh, also others who were skeptical. They started questioning whether she was really abducted. And some people took offense to that because they were like, hey, look, you know, if the girl was ab abducted, you know, I know you're not expecting her to already make a statement or talk to the media, you know, give her time to really perhaps digest what happened to her. You know, she may have been violated. She may be traumatized. You know, I think the initial media reports were that she was in the hospital recovering, et cetera. But, you know, you know how social media is, you know, people go all in once, once they really stick to their opinion, they go in, they go in on the comments, et cetera. So I believe they even, uh, went after her her family and maybe even her boyfriend. Uh, so it got to the point where her boyfriend and her family ended up having to say something like, hey, you know, take a chill pill. She's home. Uh, her boyfriend went to his Instagram and said, look, she really was kidnapped. She fought for her life, et cetera. You know, because the initial reports were that she was driving on the highway, saw a toddler and called the police. And then after that called a family member and you know, just told them about seeing this toddler. And after that, things just went dark. And once the police arrived, they saw some of her belongings there and she was in essence missing. Um, but after she was found, again, speculation started happening and it just became this massive media story to the point where Hoover police felt like, okay, we have to do a press conference because, you know, their community was worried because you had this woman who was missing and you haven't found her abductor and have you even found the toddler, you know? So people were worried and the police had to do a, a press conference to really just address the issue of their community. So once they did the press conference, they stated their, their words that they would share facts about the case. They were still investigating, but they did have some facts. And those facts included <laughs> that um, Carly just may not have been as honest as we thought, unfortunately. Uh, so some of those facts were that I believe like on J July 11th and the day she ended up missing July 13th, she made some interesting internet searches. Uh, those searches included looking up the film Taken, which is a film about abduction. She also uh, searched Amber Alerts. Uh, more specifically, she searched whether you had to pay for an Amber Alert. She also searched uh, what's the maximum age for Amber Alert. She also searched bus tickets, a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Tennessee. And the date of that trip would have been July 13th, uh, the day that she ended up uh, being missing so you know all that was just a little fishy to the police and they also saw some surveillance cameras surveillance of her leaving her job that day uh july 13th the day of her alleged abduction uh they saw that uh as she was leaving her job she was concealing uh, maybe some items that she took from her job like a bathrobe uh, some toilet paper um and she subsequently went to get some food and she went to target they saw cameras there of course she bought some snacks including cheese crackers which is kind of important down the line uh, remember the cheese crackers 
So there's that, you know, they, they had all those facts. They, you know, they, they looked through her phone and uh, her computer just to see the searches. And they saw, again, all the, the video footage. So, you know, these are things that she did prior to allegedly being abducted. Now, when they took her statement, she says that once she saw the toddler, a man appeared from the woods, uh, kind of distressed and mumbling. And from there, I guess she uh, was abducted, allegedly. And from there was put into what she said was a semi truck. And she said that there was a woman in the semi truck. And somehow she ended up at uh, some type of house, I guess the, the, the abductor in the woman's house. And she says that they took pictures of her and they played with her hair and they fed her cheese crackers <laughs> that she bought from well i'm sorry I, I won't say that she bought it well well no she did buy cheese crackers from from target but it's just interesting that she bought cheese crackers from target and they ended up feeding her cheese crackers uh, according to her so i don't know if she maybe you know let's just assume that she really did uh make all this up you know maybe in her mind she just wanted to have the evidence that she had cheese crumbs or something on her i have no idea why you know she she would try to be that specific but anyway that's that's what she told the police and so obviously at some point she says that she escaped and once she escaped she says she was in the woods and then you know she was on foot and once she got out the woods she miraculously was in her or at her parents neighborhood and uh again surveillance footage i think carly forgets that you know we're in the information age the digital age and you know there's cameras everywhere so the police actually saw footage of her arriving at her parents home and they saw her actually on foot in the neighborhood walking towards her parents home so you know, whether she was in distress or not, you know, uh, they didn't really get into the specifics. But she ended up home and and obviously I'm sure her parents were extremely happy to see her. Um, but maybe little did they know that maybe their daughter may have some issues assuming she's lying about this story. So there's that. And the police said, you know, th these are the only facts they have right now and they're still waiting to hear more from Carly and that they're open to hear more from Carly. But right now they just really aren't understanding a lot of what she's saying. Because one, one thing that was interesting is that they still have not been able to verify that there was indeed a toddler on the highway because it, it just seems that Carly was the only person that allegedly saw this toddler. And I, that's just hard to believe because, you know, if there's a toddler on the highway, I'm pretty sure there would have been tons of calls about this toddler. The police also mentioned that they were able to capture data of Carly when she was, when she called 911, that uh, she had driven about 600 yards. So if you're driving 600 yards and you're still seeing this toddler to, in the police mind, they're a little confused, like, how is this toddler walking 600 yards? Because, you know, that's six football fields, and they just find it hard to believe that a toddler uh, would be able to do that. So, you know, there's just a lot of questions. Uh, it still has not been completely verified that she is indeed lying, but let's just say, again, this is bizarre. Um, but, you know, a lot of people have hit social media and have done commentaries like myself, and they're worried that this will affect other Black women who may end up missing or who are still missing. But in my mind, you know, this is really a Carly issue. This is not a Black woman issue. Uh, Carly would be the one that would have to face the consequences. Uh, uh, Carly uh, may be the one that perhaps may need to be examined. You know, this may be a mental uh, issue for her. Uh, so, you know, that that's where, what I hope people focus on. You know, let's, let's not turn Carly into a whole black woman issue. Let's continue to protect black women. Let's continue to protect Hispanic women, indigenous women. You know, uh, they too also don't always get a lot of the news coverage when they end up missing. And let's protect any woman or anybody who ends up being abducted. But let's not turn Carly into the poster child for all Black women who are abducted. Well, that's my two cents on this story. Carly Russell, like Hollywood's going to say on his show on Sunday, 
just why? Why do we do this, sis? Why? And that's my show for today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.